We ask all of our guests if they have ghost stories, supernatural experiences, UFO sightings, anything like that. You don't need to get too deep. And if you, if you don't, you can say no. That's perfectly fine. But do you have any supernatural experiences? Mm-hmm. You do? All right. <laughs> you do. Do you mind sharing it? I have two. Okay. Oh. Wow. I've got to figure out which. I'll share you the one that's funnier, I think. Okay. Okay. So I went to um, <coughs> Nashville hmm. and to a scientific conference. And I looked online to, uh, to book a hotel, booked a hotel. And then I went down to Nashville. And uh, my former graduate advisor was coming, staying in the same hotel, but he didn't come with me. And a student of mine who uh, had become a professor was also coming into town. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so I got to this hotel. And I didn't know that Nashville, that had been hollowed out, like the downtown wasn't good. There are lots of abandoned buildings. It was pretty crime-ridden, hmm. not a fun place. They're trying to put it back together, but the hotel that I'd rented was sort of in the middle of this, and it was a 70s hotel. And uh, so it was kind of in a sketchy neighborhood. So that was interesting. So I walked in, but the lobby was beautiful. Like, they'd completely mm-hmm. redone it. There were repl- replicas of, of, like, Renaissance paintings on the roof. It was all marble. It was really quite impressive. And then right next door to the lobby, there was this huge restaurant that um, probably sat three, four hundred people, really big restaurant. And I looked in the restaurant, there wasn't a single person there. And there was this steam table, you know, full of stainless steel trays, huge trays. Mm. And all there was was like mac and cheese and green beans. You know what green beans are like if they're like soaking in hot water for like an hour. It's like, you don't want to eat those things. So that's all there was. And I thought, that's kind of weird. And there was no people in there. Mm. No staff, no people. Mm. That's weird. So anyways, I checked in and I went up and the rest of the hotel really hadn't been fixed up since the 1970s. So it smelled like smoke. The carpets were old. I went into my room. It was kind of ratty, but it was okay. Um, put my computer on the bed, put my, my uh, luggage on the bed, and called my graduate student and went out to have some barbecue. So that's fine. So then I came back and uh, got into my room, and my, my graduate student came along. This was Colin, the guy who invented that personality test. And I walked in, and all the drawers in the cabinets were open. Like, so there was a, a bureau four drawers and four drawers side mm-hmm. to side mm-hmm. and there was the little table between the beds and there was a desk and all of the drawers were open and not just a little bit open like completely open mm-hmm. but my computer was still on the bed and so was the luggage and i thought well that's weird i didn't open those damn drawers and if someone came in here to steal something why didn't they take the computer that'd be the logical yeah. thing to do so we closed all the drawers and then we thought, well, maybe like maybe a big truck went by and like that's a pretty stupid hypothesis, but we couldn't think gotta, of anything else. Gotta, so yeah, we kind of shook the cabinet to see <laughs> right. if we could get the right. doors to open. We'd right. shut all the drawers. And when we turned around, the <coughs> damn drawer on the desk was open again. Hmm. So we shut that. So, okay. So I had opened, the drawer was open in the middle little cabinet between the beds too and there was a Gideon Bible in there and it was open and it, and it was open to the line that says ye yea though I walk through the sh- valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil and I thought well that was pretty interesting I closed that <laughs> closed the door and my graduate st- we talked for a while graduate student left and I thought I didn't really think much of it I thought it was weird you know but but right. whatever it was weird so then I went to sleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up and I thought, you know, that wasn't just weird. That was really <laughs> weird. It was like someone was in my room, right? right? Because otherwise, yeah. why were the drawers open? And why were they open? Like, what's going on? <laughs> and the Bible was open. Well, and so the next morning, I went downstairs to this girl, black girl behind the counter. And uh, I, I walked up and I said, look, I don't want to alarm you, but uh, um, I went out last night and when I came back, into my room, all the drawers were open. I think someone was in my room. And she said, I don't want to alarm you. God. But we know this place is haunted. Oh, and I always come to work with a baseball bat. And I thought, oh, well, of all the responses I thought Jesus. I would get. Is that, that more terrifying? Well, it was just, I, it, it was... It was surreal, right? And it was it was, uh, it was like a movie moment. It was ridiculous. Right. So um, I went and talked to my graduate advisor, an older guy who had 
being in the hotel. And he said that the night before he had taken a shower and when he came out, there were two drawers open in his, in his room. Mm. And so <laughs> these damn drawer opening. <laughs> yeah. Doors. Okay. So, that, so, uh, but, and I'll, I'll finish this off with the other weird part of this story, which isn't quite so ghostly, but is also extremely weird. And it just gives you a sense of the place. So we went for breakfast the next day and I took two different graduate students for breakfast. We went to this restaurant right mm-hmm. next door and there was no one there. And there was no staff. The same one in the hotel. Same one. The, yeah. Same one. Very yeah. fancy. Green right. marble. Like, it might have been quite a place back in the 1970s. So we're sitting there and sitting there and sitting there and sitting there for like half an hour. And finally, this waiter walks by and we stop and we say, well, do you have any menus? He says, well, we don't have menus. And I said, well, what do you mean you don't have menus? He said, you can just order anything you want. What? And, and I said, well, you mean, you mean anything? He said, yeah, you just order anything you want. And we'll cook it. So okay, so we ordered eggs and breakfast, right? right? Well, we'll have breakfast. How would that be? So then we're sitting there talking, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited. It was like 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Nobody's there. No one's there. No, no they're one's not there. cooking Nothing's for anyone else. happening. Yeah. Finally, he comes out with these plates. And... He puts the plate down in front of me, and it's quite nicely garnished, and there's two eggs on it. And they are, I swear, they are raw. They have Mm. not been cooked. And I looked at him, and I looked at the plate, and it was the same with the other two people that were there. They gave them eggs that had just been put on the plate. He said, well, (laughs) cracked right right on. on. It wasn't like they were undercooked. They weren't white with some clear on the top. They were raw. Right. But, but nicely decorated. Sure. I thought, That's so well, weird. What, what the hell? What the hell? We said, <laughs> okay, look, look. I like, we called him back. Or we said, you know, these eggs are raw. <laughs> They're not cooked. It's like, what's going on? He said, oh, 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 we'll fix that. So then he went off into the kitchen, and it was like 20 minutes later, and he brought it back, and uh, they were cooked. And so we'd been in there for like two hours by that point, late for the conference, and I was laughing to my, to my students. I said, well, the only thing that could possibly top that off is if it was ridiculously expensive. So then he brought the bill. It was like $83. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, well. So but was he a ghost? Well, I don't know. Well, he wasn't a waiter, that's for sure, <laughs> yeah. and he certainly wasn't a cook.